right, welcome back, tubers. All right, so off camera, I uh, went ahead and got this gate jam painted. Uh, I showed the beginning of the body filler work on the inside, and uh, at this point, I'm standing way too close to the truck, but it's back on. You guys have seen me do this stuff before, but we're gonna move, now that this is ready for uh, a final scuff and paint, I wanna paint this at the same time that I do the rockers. Um, so, I'm gonna show you these panels that I got. Of course, it's dark. I need to replace some light bulbs in here. We're gonna go ahead and set this down and show you. This is a style rocker. All this is, is the part that lays right into the jam, and it's 70, 70 some inches long, but it will reach all the way from the seam back there at the door to right about, well, if you look, I don't think the camera's gonna pick it up. It should reach to about here, if not a little farther forward. This area here hardly ever goes. Um, this is solid as a rock up here. So first things first here this morning, um, I started pulling the sill plates off because the Suburbans and the Denali's and all the the luxury SUVs, they have this weather strip that runs along in here and they've got this plastic that runs along in here. Um, it has to come out. I am also gonna pull the doors off uh, because you can see with the door open how close that is to the rocker. That's the back door. So first things first, I popped off those trim panels. Uh, they just have push-in retainers that go in there. They pop up, okay? Uh, you guys can all figure that out. So now let's get to the nitty gritty. You see a light set up here. In order to pull these doors off, it's very simple. You have a 10 millimeter bolt there and there, upper and lower hinge. You have the strap that keeps the door from overextending. That's also a 10 millimeter. So there's three bolts and you have to unplug the wiring harness to the door. Now on the four doors, I've actually never had one of these apart. I've made the assumption that it is behind this trim panel right here. And I know it's really close, but I'm standing in the doorway. That's the best I can do for you. Um, I believe this is the plug wrapped in foam down here. I know the light's kind of bright, but uh, I'm gonna take a peek in there and it looks like there's a ground also on that for whatever reason. So we're gonna get that unplugged it's either right there or it's up here at the top. But one thing I wanna say about these little rubber plugs, let's see if I can get that damn light somewhere where it's providing a little bit of ambient light instead of blinding the camera. You can either pull the rubber back on them a little bit, which, let's see if I can do this one-handed. I don't know that I can. My hands are a little cold this morning here. But at any rate, um, why don't I shut that off? I'll roll that rubber back. It just goes around. There's a plastic uh, grommet that snaps into that opening. So I'll pull the rubber back and I'll show you how to remove that. All right, so I kind of lied. You don't have to pull this trim panel out. You just have to pop that out and there's your plug. It's got a little tab on the top and the bottom. So go ahead and pull that loose and remove those two hinge bolts and the strap bolt, and this door will pick up off of those pins. Just pull straight up. That one's kind of hard to see. It's a little dark down there, but you just pick straight up. Uh, these doors aren't terribly heavy, but a helper would be probably a good idea. So I'll put you guys on the stand. I don't have a helper. We're gonna do this solo. I'll just put you on the stand. That is how all of those rear doors will come loose. So there's two rear doors. So we'll go ahead and do that. Get this unplugged, maybe get a screwdriver or something just to take your clip loose. Um, if it's cold out, just be careful. Don't pry very hard on those clips because they do snap really easily broken stuff like that before. Okay, it's unplugged, nothing to it. And then 
Um, to reinstall it, you just got to get this little rubber boot back up over this plug clip and it goes right in. So I'll get a 10 millimeter socket and we'll pop that door off. I'll try and put you guys right in this corner. You're still really not going to be able to see. I'm going to end up standing in front of the camera. I guess I could have pre-loosened all this stuff so it looked really easy on camera, but typically it's not tight. You could use a little quarter-inch drive air ratchet to take these out. Usually the hardest part of removing a door, like the GM doors are easy. Hardest part is finding how the stuff plugs up, for me at least. We're going to do this with the tools you have at home as far as removing it. We're just going to use a quarter inch drive ratchet. Nothing crazy. Easy squeezy. Now I could probably leave the front door on since I'm not going that far and just pull the rear doors off. You may make an executive decision on that before this game is all played. Yeah, I probably should have rolled the damn window down first, but oh boy, she's on there. <clears throat> All right, this may take a little wiggle time, but you'll get the idea. That is how it lifts off. She's she's stuck. All right, what's amazing is these things aren't rusty, but they were just stuck on the pins a little bit. I had to wrap a towel around the screwdriver and push up on them. So there you go. That's how those doors come off. Now we'll get you a little close-up view of what I was explaining before that was hard to see. Basically, the hinge or the bracket on the door drops down over that pin, that pin, that pin, and that pin. And you can see it was the bottom one. It had a little bit of corrosion on it, a little bit of rust. I sprayed some fluid film on it. These doors are tight too. These need lubed. You can tell they weren't open and closed very much, but we're not going to mess with that until after this is done. So we're going to kind of work on this one side at a time. Uh, you'll learn right along with me. I have a, a sick feeling, since I've never had these off before, that they are double-sided tape. Could be wrong. But uh, Boy, they sure as hell look like they're double-sided tape. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> that, uh, that rocker has to come up. Basically, there's no good place to see it, but it's either going to get seamed right there or out just a skosh, so there's minimal body work. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll pry on that. <clears throat> I'm going to bet you a dollar it's double-sided tape. Let's get a bigger tool. 
you don't have some of these plastic, these are China free, but they work just fine for what I use them for. I know Snap-on makes them and a lot of Yep, there is certainly a clip on it there. Wow, and it is in there. I still can't see a thing behind it. Well, we'll show you once those are removed what the clip looks like and how to get it off. Okay, <clears throat> through the miracle of uh, the camera, I've learned how to take this off. It was clips. They're just the little springy clips with the teeth on them that bite into little plastic tabs on the back all the way down. And there's really no good way to get in there, but basically we're going to seam that rocker right into that spot right back in there. So that's why we have to take that out. So let's do the other side. We'll get the other door off, and I'll bring you guys back, and we'll start, uh, start showing you how to fit these rockers up. I may just leave that door on there. I don't think the front door is going to be an issue. So we'll come back here in a minute, take a look. Let's look at these door bottoms. Eh, not too awful. I mean, there's a little bit of crust on there, but nothing I'd be scared of as of yet. All right, I'll bring you guys back in a minute when we uh, start looking at that rocker. All right, so now that... Uh, all the accoutrements have been removed. I lied. I took the front doors off. They only take a short amount of time to remove a front door. Uh, the back doors were quick, too. There's just no reason to leave them on there, in my opinion. A lot of guys will work around that kind of stuff. I just, I feel like I'm trying to work inside a, inside a fishbowl if I have stuff like that. I just want it out of my way. Because these rockers are food bar. I mean, I just don't don't want to deal with it. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to overlay this new replacement rocker here. Um, it's a little different than factory and I'm going to show you a couple things here before we get started. Not moving so quick, I just finished my lunch. So basically if you look at the underside, well you're just staring at it big hole in the rocker but I think we're looking looking at it right here uh, that's where the factory running boards bolt on that's part of the inner rocker and if you look these are made without those notches in it so I'm gonna clamp it up there and kind of mark where those spots are notched out and then we'll uh, kind of decide how much of this I want to do a preliminary cut and take off um, one thing that you will not have doing one of these overlays style rockers, and I keep calling them an overlay uh, or a slip on, but it's really not what they are because we are not laying it over top of this garbage metal. We're actually going to either cut just eh, maybe half an inch from that seam right there, and I'm going to flare that down or tap it down and lap weld it and put corrosion protection behind it by means of weld through primer or I'll butt weld it uh, down in this area. I haven't decided how I want to do it because the lip on the top of the new rocker will come to that area there. Now when you get into the corners it's sort of rounded so you're going to have to finagle. You better hope that enough of this corner is still good. Um, at the factory this rear panel actually is spot welded along the side here and it overlays this rocker so truthfully this rocker actually goes behind there but um, this one there's still just a tiny bit of meat on the end of it uh, enough to weld to and uh, then we'll seam seal this gap again because that's full of seam sealer right now so we will uh, get something going here but I wanted to show you guys that the other thing if you look at the 99 to 06 Silverado pickups and Sierra pickups, they have these little raised, uh, like a, almost like it's bead rolled into there. The Suburbans do not have that. It is made, oh, let's focus, that is smooth. Now, 
I don't find that to be a big deal. Um, but the only way to do these is to buy the full rocker uh, if you don't want that or make your own. And I'm just, this truck isn't getting it. It's in too good a shape up in here. The inner rocker appears good. So let's get it clamped up there. We'll let the camera roll for a few minutes so you guys can kind of see how I start off with these and figure them out. Basically, I want to do some exploratory surgery. I want to cut a smaller hole than what that patch will cover. And I know I need to come pretty much to the back anyway. So I want to clamp this up here. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to clamp it. I've got a couple welding clamps here. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. The other thing is the rear heat and air conditioning lines run under this rocker. So there's really not a lot of room on this side to pinch down on anything. I just want to see something real quick here. I may not even be able to clamp this. There's just no real estate under there. Well, here's what we're going to do. We know that we don't want to take all the metal all the way up to this seam, so I'm going to cut it and leave a little bit of extra so I can get that up there. The other thing that needs to be done is we need to find all the spot welds along the bottom of this. So what I will do is take a grinder and we'll find the spot welds and I'll show you what that looks like and then you can either use a spot weld cutter or if the metal's thin enough you can just take a cut off wheel and kind of rub it back and forth over it and it'll wear the metal thin enough you'll pull it right off. So let's go ahead and uh, get that done and I'll show you what that looks like and we'll go for it. We'll get her cut off. We'll get one side cut off here today and hopefully be able to fit one up for you. All right, we're back. Now, I was explaining previously about these spot welds. We're gonna lay down on the creeper here. Basically taking the grinder and you can see the ring. And then I will take the cutoff wheel and work back and forth and I think I'm holding that well enough you can see a faint outline in there. You thin this outside metal up enough you can either put a chisel in between the two and tap it uh, or a uh, seam breaker or your air hammer once you've backed up here and you know cut loose up at the top because you can sort of fold it down a little bit and push it through from the top because you can see exactly where the weld needs broken. Now I may not have ground them far enough but that's about 10 minutes worth of grinding and it beats breaking drill bits and dicking around um, unless you have a two to five hundred dollar spot weld cutter um, that has a pneumatic feed on it to do these which I don't own one yet but I'll be purchasing one because um, I'm tired of doing it this way. Uh, you can buy the Harbor Freight ones that look like a a uh, little hole saw, I'll show you here. Actually this one I think came from Air Gas or the, one of the welding stores. Uh, it's basically a rotor brooch. Let's see, can we get her to focus? There we go. Basically a hole saw with a little center pilot in it um, to keep it centered, but these will even walk off. Uh, this is a, I think a Blair products. They work good. Um, it's just there's so many and there's nothing here I'm trying to save. And uh, I just did a little investigation. I think this truck's had a quarter put on it or a, uh, a side body panel here. I don't know where if they seamed it or if it goes all the way to the roof hem or roof seam. You can see I thought this was seam sealer and it probably is. Um, so let's go look at the uh, driver's side. It doesn't have anything like that. So I have a feeling this thing has been punched in the rear end before. Um, and this one's clean. There's nothing along the edge of it. Uh, and this rocker's in a little bit better shape as well. It's still got paint peeling. We're still gonna change it because I know it's a matter of time before it's gone. And I tapped on it and you could hear big blobs of crusty stuff coming off of it. So. That's where we're at with that. Now the next thing I'm going to do 
Um, you know, this, this, is a, this truck's in pretty nice shape. This is a work truck. Um, before I weld, I will blank it with welding blankets inside here. I'm not too concerned about a couple of sparks, and I try and aim my sparks away from it. Um, the welding blankets are just so stiff, they're hard to lay it over stuff. But I'm going to put a tape line in here, just something to follow, and we're going to get out a cutoff wheel, uh, either the pneumatic or on the grinder, however you guys like to do it. I have this kind right here to go on, like a four and a half inch angle grinder. Um, those are Diablo ones. You get those at Home Depot. I think probably Lowe's has them too. Um, I just happened to get these on Saturday. Otherwise, I probably would have went to Air Gas or somewhere. The problem is they last just about as long. You want the thinnest ones you can get, in my opinion, because um, they don't heat the metal as much. Again, not that that's a big deal. I can find a roll of tape or stick this one in the heater duct up here and warm it up. This tape's been sitting all summer. I could go do the musty one trick and throw it in the microwave, but I don't feel like doing that right now. I have another little tape. And the only reason I'm taping this is just as a reference, visual reference for myself. So I know, hey, dummy, don't go beyond this. You don't have to do this. This is not a crucial step. But, go right up into that seam right there. You can always cut more off. I can turn this into a flange. I can pretty much whatever I want to it. But I really don't want to get up any higher. that out and I'll bring you back for trying to pop those spot welds loose all right there you go it's on the floor showed you how to weaken those spot welds I use the air hammer because that's what I have and basically you run the air hammer between that seam and just pop them as you go not leave some little noogies on there you can grind those off um, inner rocker looks good got one little spot back here but I got plenty to attach to. Uh, you know, you can cry all you want about it, but this one's not getting into rockers. It's just the way of the world. Um, a little, a bunch of crust and shit back in there. But this floor was clean before I started knocking that rocker off, and that all came out of the inside. Now I've seen them way worse than this. This one's actually for the crustiness of it. Um, it's not horrible But you look at my lip up in there right where I cut it off. That's all clean metal still So I'm gonna square that off so that it's a straight line. I can't stand the fact that I cut it crooked I used an air saw to start with even though I said I was using the cutoff wheel So we'll lay that other rocker up here and see what we got can't stand working in filth, but I guess working in rust is part of the drill. And you look at that, okay, here's, let's see if I can see in the outside of that. Got yeah, a couple little bubbles starting there. Look at the inside of these things. Now they weren't completely through, except for in the back, so. This is the down and dirty way to do it, and you can make this last quite a long time, especially if you spray oil and fluid film and all kinds of stuff up in that cavity when you're done.
rig is what we're going to do. I'm going to take a piece of tape and go exactly the width of the tape away from that seam and then we'll take some off of the rocker so that fits up in there. And this is just a matter of trial and error, on and off the truck, on and off the truck, until you get it where you want to clean all the crusty rust off the bottom. Use your little angle grinder with a uh, 36 grit roll lock disc. Use wire wheels. Wear eye protection, wear ear protection, and I don't I mean, wear ear protection just because it's loud to keep the shit out of your ears. Um, I used to lay in this crap all the time, and now I just, I don't want to deal with it. I want to get in my truck, and I want to go home, and I don't want to be just a disaster. You're going to get dirty. Uh, wear a respirator. All the grinding dust from the wheels, all the rust dust, the salt that's up in those rockers. Uh, you know, if you're in a salt area, chances are you're probably in... Michigan, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, uh, New England, somewhere, if you're cutting these out. If you live in the south, you don't have these problems. Uh, maybe out west somewhere where they're using a little bit of salt. That's what destroys it. So I am going to bring you guys back when I have that fitted up. And this is, if I come upon a trick that I think you guys should see, um, I'll do that. But basically, these are not cut and dry. This is how you do it. This is how I do it. Um, I'm not a fabricator. I can weld, I can do body work, and I can paint it, and I can make it undetectable, and I can make it last. Other than that, my steps in between may vary from everybody else's. So we'll bring you back in a little bit. I don't want this video to get too long today because I'll never upload it. All right. Entering final stages of fitment and like I said before you're going to be nibbing at it and grinding on it and trying to get it to fit but this is typically for me not be for everybody this is how I do them when I don't have any problems and I'll tell you a couple of pitfalls things you need to watch for and things you need to do real good to make sure everything's good to go. Now, I've trimmed that rocker down and I'll show you the fitment here in a second. We are probably roughly a half an inch away and I sneak up on this. I trim way less than I think I need from my outer edges and then I look inside. Now, you might be able to see in there, there's some crust. A number one important thing you need to do to make this butt weld, in my opinion, is you need to get in there with wire wheels and, and implements of mass destruction and clean the living bejesus out of that. You cannot have that scale on there anywhere near your weld zone, probably an inch away if you can get it. Same thing with back here. This all needs to be cleaned out good. Now this underside here, I think if I flip the camera upside down, you can see, oh wait, it kind of flipped the whole picture around. But it's clean. Okay, there's nothing, no surprises up there. However, this lip down here is your pinch weld zone. So whether you're going to plug weld it or resistance weld it, doesn't matter. Um, as long as it's welded. This needs to be clean, clean. Now, look, it's kind of blackish colored. I've got more work to do on this with the wire wheels and such, and I will also treat all this, what I call pitting and surface rust. You could dick around all day with this sandblast in it, but at the end of the day, you're probably going to have the same results. Treat it with phosphoric acid, neutralize that acid, and either put zinc weld through primer, copper weld through primer whatever back there. Something that's not going to catch on fire, do not put a rubberized undercoating. Uh, you know, the black spray on, asphalt kind in a can, it is flammable. Do not put it back there. Some people will tell you you have to undercoat that first because you can't get to it later. Well, you can and you can't. 
and I will show you there's a couple tricks to this. Most of these inner rockers have a plug in them. Now there's also some holes in them. There's a hole up there. There will be a hole up there with a plug from the back side. That one you cannot see, but this one you will be able to see. You pop these plugs out and you get an undercoating wand in here, the kind that spray 360 degrees and you spray fluid film, oil, uh, Eastwood makes a product that's a... Uh... No, oh, hey, that was a toolbox, a rust encapsulator. Um, here, I'll show you that. That's why you don't leave all your drawers open with shit piled up on them. Uh, so, that all being said, you can do that after the fact. The uh, gray weld through zinc phosphate type primer is a good thing to put on here first. So you'll do that, and uh, if I clean up the toolbox mess, I'll bring you guys back. Good lord. Well, on a side note, there's the kaboom you heard. That was about three feet from my head. Uh, yeah, that's why you don't overload your toolbox on a rolly cart like this. I had every one of these drawers open. Um, but check this out. Here's a testimony to horrible freight. Every one of these drawers was open and it landed on them. It rocked forward. They still roll. It didn't even mess them up. I'm impressed. It dented that one though. Well, I'm going to clean up this pile up. Well, I'll talk to you in a few. Alright, now I've got all the toolbox vomit off the floor. And it's standing back up. I wanted to show you the fitment of this and kind of how I did it. This one, where it meets the rear quarter, they're not formed perfect, so you're going to have to kind of tack and move and adjust and tack and get the metal where you want it. But uh, and that's pretty much what you got. All said and done, after maybe an hour and a half, two hours of snipping and deciding how I wanted to do it. Now this up front here, I, I'll i be honest with you, I had a boo-boo. Um, I kept nibbling away at this, thinking I had that clamped up good back there. And the fact of the matter was, I didn't need to nibble any more away. So what I'll have to do is uh, fill that gap. Now it's pretty wide at the top. But uh, what I'll do is I'll put a filler strip on the back of the new metal rocker so that it overlaps the back side of this. And then we'll uh, turn the wire speed up and fill her in. But that's the other reason you really have to clean the insides of these out real nice. Otherwise, if you run into a situation where you don't have a perfect fit, I mean, you're working hard, you're, you're trying to get the best fit you can, but uh, this is aftermarket stuff. So you get it as perfect as you can get it, and of course go from there. So that's where this is going to stand for today as far as the video goes. I will uh, pop that rocker back off, treat that with phosphoric acid. I've shown that process before on kind of how I do that. There's really not a lot to it. Uh, you spray it on there, you let it set, it turns the rusty pitted spots black. You Wipe it down with water to neutralize the acid, which is counterintuitive. You're thinking, I know, you're thinking that water is going to cause it to flash rust again. Well, not because of that phosphoric acid is not going to rust right away. But then, as soon as that's dry, we'll take a blow gun to it, make sure everything's good. We will put the well through primer on. We'll be ready to go. So I will show you tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to show you the opposite rocker. It's going to be the same as this one. In fact, the other side's going to be a little, probably a little bit less work now that I've done one. Um, we'll go from there. So I'll pick it up tomorrow. We'll see you guys then.